Um, all right, Billy Royale. Hey, Bill, if you met a girl who you loved and was perfect, but she was part of the royal family, would you marry her? Could you deal with all the traditions you'd have to uphold? No, I probably couldn't. Could you wear a crown and learn how to wave to the crowd like a dandy boy? You're already in the spotlight, so you have to watch what you say and how you say it. Would this be much different? Yeah, dude, it'd be way different. I don't have to watch what I say. That's, that is all, can I tell you something? That's all a fucking myth that you have to watch what you say and how you say it. Even after these people who say they cancel people, these people, you know, when they come back, people still want to go see them. They're still selling out theaters. Their podcast numbers are off the charts. It's, it's all, you know, Nobody's getting canceled. I mean, you can lose an agent. You can lose a manager. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, some shit like that happens. But, you know, even then, if you don't have a stand-up act, you don't have like a podcast, you know, I guess as an actor, you sit on the bench for a few years and then eventually you come back. I mean, it's kind of hard if there was no cops and there was no legal founding, finding, I would think, and then just the way people are going about this shit. Where I saw this guy was getting in trouble, you know, a couple weeks ago. And this person was tweeting, come on, guys, let's, let's get it going. And said, hey, if you want to, just DM me your stories anonymously. <laughs> it's like, so I could just DM you a story? You're going to leave my name out of it and I could just say whatever the fuck I want to say about this person and then you're just going to retweet it without as fact? I mean, I don't, I don't understand. I understand, like, you know, getting rid of sexual predators and fucking, you know, people abusing their power like that. But, like, uh, you know, this whole thing now where it's, it's, it's getting to the point of, like, I don't know. Once, you know, I saw someone lose their job over an analogy, I was kind of like, all right, guys, what, what, was, was this what we were trying to do? <laughs> Stitch in time saves nine. How could you say that? There's people working in sweatshops, right? And then all of a sudden you lose, you know, how could you compare that to sweatshops? It's weird. Um, so, no, I don't have to watch what I'd say. Um, the younger me, the younger me. Would have done that, but eventually the real me would have come out and it wouldn't have lasted. Um, the younger me would have done all the things you just said, short of marrying her, because I think my friends would have teased me so much and I'd have such a need to be liked that I would probably break it off. But when the younger me, I wouldn't have done any of that. I don't know how to do this. A, a long, 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 long time ago. Um, uh, I can't tell this story. Let's just say I was in a situation. I was dating somebody. And uh, it was really my, one of my first serious girlfriends. And uh, the shit that I put up with. And it, this isn't on them. It was just me not having any boundaries. Um, I very easily would have just stood there as they dressed me up like some fucking guy who's in the military but isn't and has some big dumb hat. And then I would sit there, you know, moving, waving my hand and it's moving like a weather vane. I probably would have done that. Um, but if you're talking about now... Uh, any past the age of um, 28. You could have got me up to about the age 27. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I could have fell for that. But after that, I would have been like, no, I want to make my own mark in the world. I have my own dreams here. I, I don't want to just fucking, you know, sit around the castle and eat quail with white gloves on every night. You know what I mean? 
I mean, how long could you sit in that castle and you're watching a game and you can't be like, oh, what the fuck? It's fucking boarding. I could read his whole fucking last name, you fucking crooked cunts, right? I couldn't do that. Or maybe you can. I don't know. I don't know. And then you know what? The whole time you're in there, you're not going to feel like you want it. You're not going to feel totally respected. The old broad there, the oldest one, she knows she's just going to be blowing you off the whole time. Like, well, you don't have royal blood, you know? You downloaded their album. But, <laughs> but you, yeah, they, they wouldn't respect you. And at some point, you're just going to be sitting there thinking, what makes this pruned up old fucking twat better than me? Because she was born into this shit? She didn't fight for this. This already existed, and they just gave it to her. The fuck is she giving? I had a fucking paper route since the third grade, you know? This is when you're drinking some fucking 60-year-old cognac. Not cognac. Is it cognac? Yeah, whatever the fuck that shit is. Um... But I tell you what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't make her leave. I wouldn't do that. First of all, she wouldn't. Women like stuff too much. <laughs> I would say this. I'd say this. If, if uh, old Ginger Face was a chick and his wife was a dude, I'd say Freckles doesn't leave. I say he doesn't leave. I sit there, you know, it's not that I don't love you. It's just, you know, things are complicated. It's really complicated. I don't want to disappoint my mother. There would have been a reason. And she would have been able to cry. That would have made the dude feel guilty. And, um, yeah, make her feel guilty. And then at one point, the redheaded chick would be like, well, if, I know, and I hate the way they treat you, but I just got to say, if you really loved me. Yeah, I can't, I can't. There's racism. I know, it hurts. But I'm just saying, what about us? <laughs> they would have done that shit. It would have been that. And, it, and she would have manipulated it, manipulated it, aided it, in a way that she would have made it look like she was staying because she could no longer trust the dude. Right? I think that that's what happened. And I think what happened with uh, old Freckles there, Royal Freckles, you know, who exists on a level of ginger that I never could. He's just, he's better than me. He is, he is right from the fountain of ginger. He's pure. <laughs> he's uncut ginger. I think, I think he was treated a certain way growing up. All right. He came out, he was walking around the castle, okay, with his freckles and his flaming balls. And he's like, all right, who's kidding who? There's no fucking way they're sticking that crown in my head someday. First of all, that one guy's never going to die. He finally just fucking died, right? And then I got to wait for the other guy who's never going to die to die. And then they're going to choose between me and, you know, old cumhead over here. But, you know, he lost all his hair, but he'd know that was happening. But I, that's why I think he, he sort of rebelled. He rebelled where the other kid was just like the show pony and he had to do everything the right way, right? So he stuck, he stuck around. And then, you know, I don't know, the ginger kid, he downloaded a little bit of Tone Loke. You know, he's trying to have an edge. He's trying to be the this, this streetwise ginger in the fucking white palace. And, you know, it's just like he just veered off a little bit. And now he's in uh, Santa Barbara. And that's how it happens. That's how it happens. It's very easy. It's very easy when you don't feel loved. To just veer off into other... Fu- I think that that's what happened. He didn't feel... You know, he was Jan. 
and his older brother was Marsha, and he fucking knew it. He knew it. He said, you know what, Roy? I'm taking me rubles, me cubic zirconia, and I'm getting the fuck out of here. Good for him. Good for him. Just hope he brought his sunblock. I mean, he went all the fuck in. That dude left. He resigned as a prince, which I didn't know you could do. And then he moved to a sunny city. And married a woman of color. Wait a minute. Dare I say he's ripping me off. This kid's doing every fucking thing that I did, except I didn't live in a palace. Lived in a duplex there for a little while. Um, Living in a duplex is a great fucking thing, you know? (laughs) Everybody knows exactly how happy everybody's marriage is in that fucking relation, in that that little duplex thing. But I kind of liked it. Um. All right. Uh, Oh, Billy Royale. Oh, somebody read that. All right. College is dumb. Hang on a second. I think that's my kid. What's that? You talking to me? I'm doing my podcast. You want to ride bikes? All right. I thought she was yelling at me. She wasn't. Um, all right, dear Bill Joke Guy, I'm serious when I say college is dumb. Well, I wouldn't argue with that. Did I just fuck something up here? Why does it sound weird in my headphones right now? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What did I do? What did I do? It's not you, it's me. Maybe because I, I made fun of the Royals. Not the Kansas City ones either. Um, I'm a sophomore and I haven't learned shit. Liberal arts colleges are just extensions of high school. I've taken two art, two history classes that haven't gone much more in depth than my high school classes. Well, yeah, I mean, I, so all of college is dumb? I don't think they're doing that at MIT. He goes, I have to, he or she says, I have to take electives like music history. What the fuck is this shit? I came to college to major in biology with plans to become a doctor. You know what would help me save lives in the future and do my job better? Not filling my head with bullshit like, why did ragtime jazz evolve to Mississippi blues? This would be interesting if I was watching a free documentary, but it's infuriating paying 25 grand a year for this. Um, Well, you know something, kid? There's somebody that's going to take that class who's thinking they want to be a doctor and all of a sudden they, maybe they'll get into music. I don't know. The college system is a waste of time and money and it's wildly inefficient. I've learned a lot more. I've learned a lot about myself and how to and not to pick up chicks at the bar and I've made good friends. I think the stigma of not going to college is changing a bit. Will you encourage your kids to go to college? Um, depends on what they want to do. I don't know. That's a long way off. But like, I thought you were going to say other things about why you thought college was stupid. I think um, I think going to a big, expensive college is stupid. Um, obviously, if you want to be a doctor, I think you need a little bit of training. It's not like you can go on YouTube and figure out how to do that shit. I think the, the major, or what did you say you wanted to do? Um... Major in biology with plans to become a doctor. Yeah, I mean, that's something you have to go to school for. It's not like, you know, you know, I'm kind of thinking of starting my own business. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. You can always take a couple of business courses at like a fucking a cheap school. I mean, a spreadsheet is a spreadsheet. Okay, uh, the principles of business are the same. Um, I watched that documentary about those rich people having their, their kid's head cut and pasted onto an athlete's head so they could get onto, into a fucking school. They were talking about prestige, prestigious colleges, and that the initial definition, it's a French word, and the initial definition of it meant deceit. A prestigious college, it's, um, I think you go to those colleges because you, you get to fucking... You know, your college roommate is Bill Gates Jr. But other than that, one plus one equals two in a fucking, 
state school versus an Ivy League school. And um, what I found the keys to being successful is you, you really have to, you got to surround yourself with positive, supportive people, which is hilarious because I spent like eight years at the Comedy Cellar. Um, and so much of it comes down to like, it really comes down to you. You could have a Harvard degree. You could have a, you know, could go to Quincy Junior College, right? Just picking where I grew up, the most prestigious versus the one that everybody, can, or Bunker Hill, Bunker, Bunker Hill Community College. You know, it really doesn't make a difference. Like nobody gives a fuck about that piece of paper um, when they're getting into business with you, if you have a business idea. Like if you ever watch... Shark Tank, none of them are ever saying, where did you go to college? They just like, what is your idea? How much you in for? How much have you sold? Where where do you see this? Whatever the fuck they ask. That's all they're asking. So, um, but there's other things like, you know, becoming a doctor and stuff. I mean, you need to, you need to get your training. So I would actually think that like, you're one of the few people that's going to college and amassing all of this. I still don't think it should cost as much as it does, though. Um, I don't know. I kind of talked all around all of that shit. But I, I always felt like the way to go, like if you wanted to go to a very prestigious school, is to transfer in after two years. Through your freshman and sophomore year, somewhere else, transfer in, and then you're still going to get the big prestigious degree for half the money. Um, seems like the better way to go. Uh, but if, you, if your parents have money and they can get you into some big ass school and they got a great football program, you can get drunk and act like a fucking idiot for four years. I mean, that's also fun too. <clears throat> you got your whole life to work, right? Why start now? All right, girlfriend wants us to move to Hollywood. Hey, Billy Butterbean. <laughs> I'm a 26 year old guy and my 24 year old girlfriend of four and a half years has decided she wants to chase her childhood passion of acting. When she initially mentioned wanting to take acting class, I was very supportive and told her to pursue it to her heart's content. Well, a couple of weeks ago, she decided the acting school she wanted to go to was the fucking American Academy of Dramatic Arts in Hollywood. I tell her to apply, being the caring fucking bozo I am, and she gets in. Of course she did. Um, now she wants us to move in LA, to L.A. in January for the winter semester. We live in Texas and barely make enough to live in our modest two-bedroom apartment. When I explained to her how expensive L.A. is and that we do not have jobs there and that we would have to live behind a lot of our two, leave behind a lot of our two bedrooms worth of furniture to live in a small, shitty apartment, she says I care too much about money and material possessions and that she is so disappointed I can't be excited to go on this adventure with her. Yeah, I imagine, imagine if the tables were, were turned. Would she want to go on this adventure and leave that L-shaped couch? Keep in mind, we were long distance from 2018 to 2020 when she moved back to our state. I took a second job so we could afford a two-bedroom that she begged for. Begged for! Exclamation point. Now I am the bad guy for saying I do not want to downsize to a smaller place in fucking Hollywood. I love this girl. She's a sweet and lovely lady. Isn't that amazing? After all that shit that she's doing to you still, I mean... Uh, you know, uh, unreal. I intend on marrying her, but how can I tell her she's out of her mind and that trying to move to Hollywood to become an actress is a fucking fairy tale dream? Any help you or the lovely Nia is much appreciated. Thanks and go fuck yourself. No, moving to Hollywood and becoming a, an actress is not a fairy tale dream. It happens all the time. Um, so my question is, is, do you really believe that she can do this shit? Or are you just saying, yeah, whatever you want to do because you're just being a good guy? And now it became real, and it, now you're going to say, like, your dream isn't going to come true. You don't want to do that to her. But also, you know, she's looking out for herself here, and you have to look out for yourself. You're both single. You're not married to each other. You're just boyfriend, girlfriend. So you have to make the decision, do I love this person enough to leave the comfort in the space of Texas, not to mention the Texas mentality to come out to Hollywood to hear the inverse of what probably what you think about a lot of things and how you see the world. And, uh, I mean, what about you? What about your dream? 
Um, I think this is a time to be selfish um, in that you have to figure out what you want. This is one of these things. You're not, you're not being self. She's going after what she wants, and she doesn't give a fuck about dragging you out there. She doesn't give a fuck about the quality of life that you're going to live while she's there. She doesn't give a shit. She's, she's got her eye on the prize, and she wants to go get this shit, which there's nothing wrong with that. So what you got to do, you almost got to be the chick here. You got to be like, well, what's in it for me? You got to put a ring on my finger if I'm going to go out. That's what they do. But she wins that too. If, if so, I don't know. Um, I don't know, man. Can't you just find some chick that likes to line dance and drive in the fucking rubbing your dick in a fucking Chevy Silverado as you drive down the street listening to Travis Tritt? I mean, there's got to be a million of those out there, right? Why don't you just do that? Why don't you just say, listen, you know, I think we had a great run. I don't want to move out there. I don't want to ruin your fucking dream. But my dream is not to, you know, live in L.A. and, you know, watch somebody else's dream come true. My dream is to stay right here in Texas, right? Give myself a spread north of Dallas. Have a woman that can make me some chicken and biscuits. Listening to country music. What would you do? You had to give your life to freedom. Um, what would you do? Um, yeah, you got to figure out what you want here, buddy. Um, it all depends. You know, some people don't mind, like, I don't know. I think if you want to be like a house husband, because at that point, you know, she goes out and makes it. She's going to be on set fucking all day long. Somebody's going to be have to be at home with the kids. You know, I don't know. That's a tough one. And that, and that is a big ask for you to move all the way out there. Um, but if that's what she really wants her to, wants to do, I want her to do it. And I just want you to do what's right for you which is what you have to figure out. Which it sounds to me that you think like, her, you actually, the fact that you think her dream is ridiculous, which is what it sounds like, I would not go out there. Because at some point, you're going to be fucking pissed, you know, when rodeo season starts and you're watching it on some little square TV and she's over in the corner going, to be or not to be. And you're like, what the fuck? Why don't you make me a fucking sandwich? I'm just worried. I just don't want you to get involved in that. Um, there have been a lot of stereotypes in this story, and uh, it's because I'm ignorant. All right. What, should, what I should have said. Oh, one of my favorite things here. What I should have said. How many times does somebody say something to you? They're out of line, right? They're in your kitchen. They're right in your fucking grill, whatever expression you like. And what happens? You kind of freeze up in the moment. You're like, what the fuck? And then the moment... That you should have said something goes away, and as you're walking away, as you're driving away, a year later, fucking a week later, whatever, you realize what you should have said. This is what this segment is about. Number one, here we go. Pool douche. Yo! Long-time listener, first-time writer. I've always wanted to say that, and it's true. I'm writing in about the passive-aggressive people you spoke about on Thursday, and I almost always find myself in that situation where I'm just like, oh, okay, and I never even noticed what happened until after the fact. Anyways, all capitals. Um, I was at my local YMCA taking a swim in the pool, and this dad and his kid comes in. The kid looks about 15, 16-ish, and almost immediately the lifeguard asks the kid to help him set up the floating lane diver thingy, divider thingy. I was watching them out of curiosity because I never saw it done before. When they got done, the kid sees me looking and squares up a little bit and says, is there a problem here? Confused, I kind of just went, oh no, I was just watching you guys hook the thing up. I've never seen it done before. Then he goes, oh, okay, with a that's what I thought tone. Ooh, oh, an attitude. Oh, that reminds you know something. I know that feeling. 
And I think the Beatles wrote a song about it. Boy, you're gonna carry that weight. Carry that weight a long time. That's gonna stay with you. I continued to swim for a good couple of minutes before getting out to go hit the showers, and it wasn't until then that I picked up on what happened. I was literally in the shower naked, jumping up and down in anger, saying how much I would fuck that kid up. I wanted to drown his little ass and send his body floating back over to his dad. Oh, my God, dude. Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah, so much shit comes out when you're in the shower. Regret, things you should have said, shame. I don't know what it is about the shower. That's when I just, I just start thinking over my life. You used to do a bit about that. You start trying to shout all the bad thoughts out of your head because they're embarrassing. You just start thinking like, ah! <laughs> is everything all right in there? I think I did that on one of my little fucking routines there. Anyway, that's really all. Love the podcast. Love the family. Stay happy. Stay safe and healthy. And I'll see your bald ass in Bethlehem. Um, Bethlehem, where is that? Is that in Israel? Or is that Jerusalem? Does Bethlehem still exist? Yeah, oh, Jesus. Bethlehem City. Well, there's one in Pennsylvania. Is there one in Israel? Anything is biblical. I just say Israel. There is. Oh, Jesus. The control of Bethlehem passed from the Ottomans to the British. At the end of World War I, Bethlehem came under Jordanian rule during the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. All right. Well, there you go. All right. We conveniently sp- spoke around a number of groups in that little description. Shopping cart douche. All right. Hey, Billy, something insulting that starts with B. Oh, don't tap out like that. Uh, I still love Billy Babushka. Uh, got one of those stories about wishing I had said something for you. I was 18 or 19 as a sh- uh, working as a shopping cart wrangler at the only supermarket in town. I'm sweating my sack off. <laughs> sweating my sack off during the pre-4th of July rush to keep up with the flood of people coming in and out. I'm stepping out onto the sidewalk to get more when a guy in his mid-40s walking into the store asks me to grab a shopping cart for him. They're all of six feet from where he's standing. I say no problem in my best customer service voice and turn around to grab one and hear him say, um, I think you mean yes, sir. Because no problem makes it sound like I'm inconveniencing you. Oh, God. Who raised that person? You know what, you know what, uh, at the end of the story, I'll tell you why you, you can actually find humor in that. Um, I get what he means. I don't get what he means. Don't fucking be. Oh, my God. Don't, don't, don't find an excuse for this fucking guy. He goes, I get what I mean. But he went from being all casual, asking for a favor to holier than thou cunt. Huffer? I mean, heifer? Trying to put a teenager in his place. I'm pretty sure all I said was. Yeah, and handed the card off to him. But I think about this guy at least once a month. Just know that this guy's existence is he gets off on on saying that as a grown man to a teenager, make a minimum wage collecting fucking grocery carts. You know? That's the kind of person he is. And the way he made you feel is how he makes most people feel. And and when you go around living like that, you, yeah, you have a shit life. He's going to have a shit life. Just know that. What a fucking cunt. I think you mean yes, sir. No, I think I meant no problem. I think I meant I might shove this over up your fucking ass. Now I'm upset with this fucking guy. Oh, God. You know what? This should be like a superhero for that type of a moment that just flies in and just says what you want to say so you can't get fired or punches him in the face and you can't... I, I, used, I wrote a sketch about that. About a superhero that comes in 
when you want to punch somebody in the face, but either you can't beat him up or you're going to go to jail. And this superhero would come in. He was called the dropper. And someone would just be a fucking asshole to you, man or woman. And this fucking dude would come in with this cape and just blast him right in the face. And before you could thank him, he'd fly away. That, that would have been a perfect job right there for the dropper. Think you mean yes, sir, because no problem means it sounds like I'm inconveniencing you. Bam! Thank you, mass man. All right, Bill Burr show. Hey, Bill, I have a great what I should have said moment that actually took place at one of your shows. Uh, Center in the Square, Kitchener, Ontario. I was with a few friends. Oh, man, I always have a great time in Ontario. I always seemed to... One time I went there in the summer, the other times, two times has been in the winter when you can skate along the canal. That's fucking amazing. Uh, I was there. Pretty soon with global warming, it'd just be rollerblading. (laughs) I was there with a few friends, and we were having a blast watching your openers and getting pumped to see your act. Right before you came on, some drunk asshole sits a few seats down from us and proceeds to start talking through the entire show. He was responding to things you were saying as if he thought he was having a one-on-one conversation with you, generally just being annoying. A few minutes go by when I finally say, hey, shut up, to which he responds, hey, why don't you mind your own fucking business in an extremely expressive tone? I was too stunned in re- to respond in the moment, and he went on talking through the rest of the show. That's interesting to me that you had the balls to say, hey, shut up. And then you kind of retreated. I've been there too. Sometimes this moment pops into my head and I think about what I should have said. Maybe something like, I paid X amount of dollars to see this show, so it is my fucking business. Or something to that effect. What do you think? Um, you know what most of these are? It's just you're raised right and you have too much to lose. Someone who comes in that fucking drunk and acts like that much of a douche, um, they, they don't care about just starting swinging on somebody and going to jail and having a court case and all of that type of shit. And the reality is so many people have these stories because you're a fucking adult and you can't walk around. Certainly as a man, you just can't walk around saying everything that you're thinking because you can get the shit kicked out of you. I don't know how it works with women. There's like, I don't know how their deal is. I mean, if you base all of them on the Real Housewives, which is not fair, they pretty much say whatever the fuck they think, (laughs) no matter how mean the shit is. Um, I don't know. Is that why they outlive us? Not because I say they're nagging us to death. Maybe it's because they just fucking say everything that they... It's a two-way street, you know what I mean? I don't know. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me, but uh, you shouldn't say these things. You should have a lot of what I should have said. Um, I fortunately don't have a lot of those um, in my, with my wife. I kind of say, I, 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 what I have with my wife is I have, I wish I, I, I should have said it this way, um, which is a good thing because saying things another way Usually that first way you want to say it when you're, when you're pissed is it's, it's never going to come out good. Because it's usually prefaced with, well, I'll tell you why, you fucking asshole. At that point, nobody's listening. It's like you have to somehow master your emotions and just be like, you know, I don't know I'm telling a story right now on stage about this great argument I got into with my wife. Um, where she was right and I acknowledged that she was right and then I wanted her to do me a favor and then it's a long fucking convoluted fucking thing here. I don't even know if that's the right word. But I said something in the middle of that argument that kind of changed things in a great way in that argument and the last like 10 days of my life. Um, and to hear that story, you're going to have to come out to Vegas <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that was just complete bullshit. That was just me trying to fucking hype my show. And if you'd like to hear the rest of this funny thought, come out to the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas, July 3rd. Um, 
No, don't beat yourself up over that. Uh, you know what you do is you. Uh, what's great about becoming a comedian is then you can immediately go on stage and you tell that story and then you get something out of it. Um, you get a laugh out of it. You get other comics saying, hey, it's a great new story or a joke. And uh, then you also get to say the thing that you wished you said. And then if you're smart enough as a comic, you fucking say everything you just said and talk about what, how much it bugs you and how you've been, th- you're going to think about it for years or whatever. And that's the thing that everybody relates to. And then that's what, you know, you get that great laugh that's beyond just laughing. They're laughing because they relate. And they know what you're talking about. So, anyways, what a fucking dick, man. I'm not going to lie to you. I have to walk that last one off a little bit. Ah, what a douche. Who says that? I think you mean yes, sir. I mean, does that even sound like something that a person would even say in that moment? Doesn't that, to me, that sounds like, you know, like a, like a, a bad movie where they're showing like, uh, you know, where they're overly writing a character like this person's a dick just for the sake of being a dick. Like there's no backstory like this guy's an asshole. This guy is nice. You know, when you're watching some, a terrible movie, there's no layers to anything. They're, pe- they're not even people. They're just uh, they're adjectives. Asshole, hero, haughty, right? Fuck. I'm just babbling about this fucking guy. You know what, buddy? You don't need that because I'm going to carry that weight a long time. All right, that is it. That is the podcast. Congratulations to the Islanders. Let's go Bolts, man. I want to see a seven-game series because I am emotionally not tied to this shit anymore. And I know Islander fans and and Tampa fans don't want seven games because they don't want to die a thousand deaths, but I don't give a fuck because I'm out. I just want my entertainment and I... you know, I'm rooting for the Vegas Knights. And, I'm, and uh, yeah, I think I'm rooting. I, I think, you know, with everybody left, I think I got to go Islanders. Just because it takes me back to watching the NHL on the USA Network. Way back in the day, the USA Network, Lanny McDonald, Al McGinnis, Pelly Lindbergh, rest his soul. Eddie Belfour. Who else was around? Marcel Dion. Fucking Guy LaFleur. Guy Carbono. The fucking Stastny brothers. Brothers. Colorado Rockies. All right, sorry. That's the podcast. Well, you hung around, didn't you? You, you, you stuck around, didn't you? God bless you. I will check in with you motherfuckers on, uh, was it Thursday, right? All right, go fuck yourselves.